punk. Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode in our online tutorial series. Today we will be taking you through hemming by hand. So as always, grab a cuppa, sit back, relax and join us. So what we're going to do to start with is we'll go through the equipment that we're using. Uh, Ellie has the tape measure, uh, quite an essential item. We then have pins. Um, and we'll be using quite a few of them to stabilise the hem as we sew. And the cotton. Now, we're obviously using a nice bright colour. Um, one, for you to be able to see the stitches. And two, to show you that the type of hem we're going to show you won't show the stitches on the right side of the garment. So by using this nice bright colour, you can see that the stitches are well and truly hidden on the outside. We then have our needle. Now, very different to the darning needle we showed you in the previous workshop. This one is quite small, um, very sharp, and um, our needle threader which I'm not ashamed to say I use all the time to thread these tiny needles. So once again, because it's a slightly different needle, Ellie will show you the principle of threading the needle with a needle threader. Now when you um, are drawing your cotton off to thread your needle, you are advised not to pull any more than about a meter off, purely because cotton loves to tangle itself. If you have more than a meter, it does make it very difficult to pull through. It starts to shred and get weak. So we always work at most a meter's length. The best way to tell that is if when you pull your cotton off your reel, you hold one end of the cotton and pull it up to about your armpit and generally that's around about a meter's length. So as you can see, she's threading, threading it through the fine wire of the needle threader and very gently pulling it through the very small eye on this needle. Now, with this, the principle, you do need to put a knot in the end of your cotton, as Ellie will show you now. So now with her cotton threaded through her needle and knotted, um, she's now going to measure how much to take the trousers up by. Now there's a few ways you can do this. Um, basically you can put your trousers on and keep pinning until you find the length you're happy with. Um, you can measure your inside leg from the top of your leg down to where you would like the trousers to finish. Now, both of these, if you're doing it yourself and quite possibly you will be with social distancing in place now, these can be quite difficult. So a great tip from us is if you have another pair of trousers, that sit similar or the same to the way these sit on you, 
you can measure those trousers against the ones you want to take up. So you would measure from the inside crotch seam to seam. So you would place that, that top seam against your other pair of trousers. Make sure that your legs are laid out straight and then you can measure the correct amount to take up from the trousers that fit you correctly. And this is a much, much easier way to work out the correct length. So having gone through that, we now know how much we need to take these trousers up by. So Ellie is just showing you on tape measure that it is, they've got to come up by two inches. So we recommend that you fold your fabric up And then from the bottom fold up to the edge of the hem, you measure. And that's exactly two inches. So Ellie is pinning that. And now, once that's in place, she'll go all the way around the hem, measuring exactly two inches. Now, the hem has been measured all the way around and pinned. What we will do now is iron that fold to make it nice and crisp. Um, and we have one prepared here where you can see that that has been folded on the bottom, folded and pressed. Now we press with a cloth over to avoid the iron giving the trousers a slight shine or dress or whichever you might be hemming. Now, once that is done and the hem has been pressed, you will then measure again and fold in one centimetre from the top. Now, you, as you can see, Ellie has also pressed that in as well, which has given it a nice crisp finish to the hem. Now, if your trousers have to come up by a lot, we recommend that you trim some of the excess fabric away. Um, and we always say measure twice and cut once. So if need be, you would just need to trim away enough that would allow you to have a small fold over at the top of the hem. So once all of your measuring and pinning has been done, we then move on now to the stitching. So, Today I'm going to show you two stitches, 
So one side seam to seam, we're going to do what we call a catch stitch. Now this turns out to be almost like a, a triangle shape. So Ellie will start by threading the needle through the cotton so that the knot ends up inside of the hem like so and then she'll just tuck the end in. Now this is the tricky part. She will come up into the pant leg but only catch a few strands. Now that is extremely important that the needle doesn't go right through the fabric. So there will be a small amount of tension, but not too tight because obviously it will pull and gather the trousers. From there, she will go back down into the hem of the pants. And Ellie will now progress all the way around to the other seam doing this stitch. So into the pant leg by only a couple of strands and then back into the hem. And just pulling it enough for it to be secure. Couple of strands and back into the hem. And as you will see, that is giving you a V shape. And we call it a catch stitch because it literally is just catching the threads as we go along. So Ellie will now just finish off that side of the trouser leg.
lovely. Now, Ellie will show you the inside of the trouser leg first to show you that, as you can see, there isn't any stitches showing. Once that's pressed, that gives you a lovely finish. And on the inside of the trousers, whilst it's orange and the trousers are black, it's just to show how neat the inside of the trousers look as well. Now, when you would use a matching or invisible thread, you can imagine that you wouldn't see those stitches but your hem is nice and secure. Now we're going to move on to the second stitch that I'm going to show you, um, which is just a very basic hemming stitch. Um, it gives you the same effect um, as the catch stitch, but it's just a different stitch. Um, so you have a choice to which you prefer to work with in the future. So again, we are just catching literally the tiniest of threads on the main leg of the pants and then going into the folded over hem. Again, not too far apart, keep them fairly close together if you can, as that adds to the neatness of the stitch.
So she's coming around now nearly to the end. And as you can see, pressing really helps to keep the cloth where you want it without it springing out everywhere. And now Ellie's just finishing off. So what she's doing is leaving a loop and then passing her needle through that loop and then gently pulling, which gives you a nice neat knot to finish. And now she'll turn the trouser leg right over for you on both sides. And as you can see, two different stitches but the same effect and the reason I've shown you two stitches is that you can then try both and see which one you prefer to do. I like the catch stitch which gives you the shape of almost like a zigzag form. Some of the other girls prefer doing the hem stitch it really doesn't matter which one you choose it's down to personal preference now those of you who will purchase the starter kit to allow you to have the tools that you need what we will do when we send those out to you we will send you some invisible thread that you can try. Um, it does not quite easily, but it is worth trying it just to see what you think. And as you see, when Ellie lays it against the dark cloth, you actually don't see it at all. So it does allow for you while you're practicing that your stitches won't actually show. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you found it useful. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact. Myself or Ellie will be only too willing to help you out. Um, so get hemming. Thank you.